Cowboy up if you're looking for some deeper truth. Cowboy up, I know just the place for you. Mr. Mike Mayfield. Ready? This, this is, is my, my Bible. Bible. I, I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, the ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, 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 I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. Good evening. Small in number tonight, but we're, the quality of our hearts is good. Amen. Tonight we're going to wrap up the little message that we were have begun last Tuesday evening of laying a foundation of our view of God. And then the next two Tuesday nights we're going to discuss God's view of us. And sometimes that uh, our view of Him kind of interrupts what we really think and what the Bible tells us about what God says about us and what God how He views us. Yes, Lord. But I've got some puzzling questions I want to share with you. Isn't it a bit unnerving that doctors call what they do practice? Right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Why do feet smell and noses run? <laughs> if all the world is a stage, where does the audience sit? If work is terrific, how come they have to pay you to do it? <laughs> when sign makers go on strike, who makes their signs? <laughs> if a parsley farmer is sued, can they garnish his wages? Yes, God. <laughs> and what would a fly be called if he had no wings? Would they call him a walk? Yes, Jesus. <laughs> and last but not least, isn't Disney World a place where people are trapped and it is operated by a mouse? <laughs> Again, I'll be here all week. <laughs> <laughs> He's got <on> this ticket. <laughs> Tonight we're going to finish up 
this and it, how many of you took notes last week? How many of you answered that question? Not that you have to answer, but how many of you answered the question, what is your perceptions of God, either as you're growing up or as you were growing up, what was your perception of God? Amen. How many of you answered that question? How many of you got to have an answer to that question? Yeehaw! So tonight we're going to look at some personal attributes of God. Ride like the wind. Genesis 1.26, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. We are all created in the image of God. When you look in the mirror, you don't see three, three parts to your body, your person, but there are three parts to you. There's a body, there's a soul, and there's a spirit. Got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Bible reveals a personal God reaching out to His creation, demonstrating all of His characteristics of the personhood that we experience as human beings, except without sin. God is love. God shows His unfathomable affection for each one of us. 1 John 4, 8, we covered this a couple of weeks ago in the daily ride. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Amen. God is love. Yes. And if you're a child of God, you may be still trying to learn how to love. Yeah. Because love is, is something that you have to learn how to do. Yeah. You don't just automatically do it. Merry Christmas. You know, we, we, we love our parents as children. That's an innocent type of love. We learn to love our kids <laughs> at times. We don't have a child. Uh, but we learn, we, we, through those experiences, we learn to love teenager. abroad. God's love desires our eternal welfare, and all of His acts are done to secure that. His love is consistent, it never fails. And it's pure because God is love, and that is the core of His nature. God is love. Everything about Him is love. He has shown us His love in such wonderful, wonderful ways. This time of year, we celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus, and that was God showing us His love through giving us the gift of His Son. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> First Peter <laughs> First Peter 1 20 says he indeed has foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these times for you God has set everything in motion when he spoke the world into existence and let there be light he created the world he created every aspect of the world the, the heavens the earth and the seas and the creatures that crawl and fly and swim. And he did it all because he loved us and is manifesting his love towards us. John 3, 16, such a powerful verse. I love the third word in this passage. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish that have everlasting life. This well-known verse speaks of the divine love that God has and has moved towards us and providing us with salvation for the world through His Son. Romans 5, 8, another popular well-known verse, well-known passage, but God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yes. Yes. Now, I've mentioned in a couple of messages, and I think I mentioned this last Tuesday evening, that God made his appointment even though Adam and Eve chose to mess up. Yeah. He chose to be disobedient. He still came into the garden to walk with him. I am a God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we while I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. 
and gave me the opportunity to get to know Him through Jesus. Amen? God's love continually shows itself in infinite and unwavering good, His goodwill towards us. What, is, what was it the angels said when they came and sang to the shepherds? Glory to God in the highest. Peace and goodwill towards all mankind. God is holy. Absolute purity. Cannot sin, nor can he tolerate sin. And he came to be the sin sacrifice for each one of us in the body of Jesus. And that's what we celebrate, the birth of Jesus. And then 33 years later, we celebrate the resurrection. Amen? God is absolutely holy with a perfection of purity in his uncreated being that can fill us with awe and worship. What do you think? What, what do you think of when you think of God? Most of the time, what we think of is the experiences that we've had with Him, right? You know, we come to church, we have we've heard a good message, God speaks to our heart. Oh, that was such a powerful message. Thank you, God, for speaking to me. But yet we fail to see that when the sun rises, that's God shining upon us. When the moon rises, that's God shining upon us. When we hear a chicken cluck, when we hear a rooster crow in the morning, when we hear a horse neigh, when we hear a cat, when we hear a cat, God created that for our enjoyment. And because He is holy, He had to provide a way, a remedy for our sin condition. Isaiah 6.3 says that one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. I challenge you, when you get up in the morning, to look at something and say, Thank you, God, for that. Whatever it is that your eyes land on. Thank you for that cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. you know, there was a, there's a process that goes on in order for that cup of coffee to be brewed. God had to be in, was involved in it in some aspect when the bean was growing on the tree. <coughs> Revelation 15.4 says, Whom shall not fear you, O Lord, and glory your name? For you alone are holy. For all nations shall come and worship before you. For your judgments have been manifested. Your judgments have been, past tense, have been. Amen. Ain't that good? Yes. Isn't God good? Amen. We have a reason to be excited. In, in, in such a chaotic time in our world, the election process is jacked up, and, and, and we may not know until after the first of the year who's going to be inaugurated. I have an idea in my mind who it might be, but... God knows, and God knows every aspect of every single day, of every every single second of every day, of what's going to happen, who's going to do what, who's not going to do that. And He chooses to love us because He gives us a world that is full of His glory despite its brokenness. Yes, thank you, Lord. If it weren't for the beauty of God's grace, that has accomplished through Jesus. God's grace has been accomplished through Jesus. We would not be able to approach God in His holiness. But in His mercy, He has made a way for us to approach Him. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find help in our time of need. How many of you has ever had a need in your life? Every hand goes up. We all have. We may be in need now. We may have just gotten through a need. We may experience that we're going to have a need come next week. God knows that need. And He's an ever-present help 
in time of need. The blood of Jesus presents us before the Father as righteous and sanctified. Thank you, God, for your love, your wonderful, wonderful gift of your Son, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Father. We're able to stand in His presence with the imputed holiness we can never accomplish on our own. Yes, yes. Matter, how many of you know what the word <coughs> imputed means? Mm -hmm. Go home and look it up. It's a very powerful word. And, and, and of all the words in the English language that, that uh, has to do with Christianity and, and God, this is my favorite. Yes. The old system God created and set up as a picture of what Christ was coming to do. This is what we celebrate when we celebrate the birth. We celebrate much more than a child being born. We celebrate a Savior coming to give us access to our daddy. The word impute means that whatever I have, I need a volunteer. Brent, come here for a minute. <laughs> You're familiar with the stage, so. <laughs> uh -oh. Spotlight's on you right now. <laughs> Brent here is a sinner. He's in need of a Savior. And everything that he has, everything in his life that he's done wrong, he's going to have, he's gonna have to face God one day and pay for it. Jesus said, I'm coming as the Lamb, the sacrifice to take your place. And what Brent says is, I'm, I'm trusting Jesus to do that. And so what Brent does is he lays his hand upon Jesus. He says, I trust you. I believe what you're doing is for my benefit. I'm believing that one day, because of what you're doing, I will stand in front of your daddy, who is now my daddy. And all of his sin was transferred, was imputed to Jesus. But imputation is a two-way thing, like communication. If I'm going to have a conversation with Brent, it's not, it's not me just talking to him. It's him talking to me. That's what makes it conversation. The thing that makes imputation functional is that it's a two-way street. All of his sin, everything he's done wrong has been transferred to Jesus. Jesus died. He nailed it to the cross with himself. But Jesus said, here is my righteousness. Here is my holiness. Here is my right to stand in front of my daddy as your daddy. Ain't that good? Yes. Now, ain't that your new favorite word? Yes. Because what has happened, Jesus came, he was born, so that imputation could take place 33 years later. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rick. Does that make sense? Yes. You understand that word impute now? You understand why it's my favorite word? Because I get to stand in front of God every day. Yes. Without no shame, with no guilt, because Jesus set it right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Therefore, let us come before His throne of grace boldly. Yes. That word impute, that gives me the right to do that. Yes. Second Corinthians 5, 21 says, For He made Him to who knew no sin to be sin, to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. I, that's why I gave you the homework. Look in the mirror and say what? I am the righteousness I'm of God. Righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ, Jesus. in Christ Jesus. It's not my righteousness. Oh, my pastor said he was righteous and he gave it to me. Now I'm right. No, it ain't me. And it ain't you. It's all about Jesus. Yeah. And it's all about him. And it's my job as a pastor to point you right there. Yes. I don't have all the answers. I can promise you I don't. I've got a lot of wisdom. It's been handed to me through experience. It's been handed to me through study. I don't know everything. God does. I can point you to the one who knows everything. Yes. Can solve your problem a lot quicker than I can. Which brings us to God is wisdom. God realized and realizes that best designs by the best possible means. God has designed you in a specific way. And that specific way is to look for Him. And He said, if you will look, you will find. 
If you'll seek, you'll find, right? If you'll knock, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to candy bar the door. Is that what he said? Your glasses. No. If you knock on the door, I will open it. Seek and you shall find. I'm thankful that he does. God plays hide and seek with us sometimes. And I think he does that after we're saved at times because he wants us to look for him. Yes. But before salvation happens is the experience in my life, God never plays hide and seek with a sinner. He likes to play hide and seek with his kids. Anybody ever play hide and seek with their kids? I used to like to do that. I'd hide real good. And it's been that's been lots of time looking for daddy. God's wisdom. He wants to give it to you. How I many of us heard of A.W. Tozer? A.W. Tozer defines wisdom as this: the ability to devise perfect ends and to achieve those ends by the most perfect means. God did that. He designed the plan. He fulfilled the plan. Now he asked you to trust him. Yes. Psalm 104 verse 24 says, O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. God owns everything. God paid for everything. You know, the devil came in and took it. God had come and bought it back. Could have took it back, but he paid the price for it. A price that he didn't know. And all of God's acts that are done in wisdom because of the integration of those things and attributes of his being. He is not tainted by sin or selfishness. His acts are motivated by the awareness of ultimate good. God has got good things in store for you. Yes. We just got to trust that. I know the plans that I have for you, and they may be okay one day. No. Is that what Jeremiah 29 11 says? No. What does he say? I know the plans that I have for you, and they're good. Yes. Isaiah 28 29. This also comes from the Lord of hosts, who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. God is ju a just God or a God of love. He is love, but he is of love. Isaiah 45, 21 says, Consult together, argue your case, and state your proofs that idol worship pays. Who made the, these things known long ago? What idol ever told you they would happen? Was it not I, the Lord? For there is no other God but me, a just God and a Savior. No, not one. Well, we can, we can make all kinds of gods, can't we? We can use our television as a God. We can use it, our, our careers as a God. We can use our families as a God. Anything that comes between you and God is a God. And God wants your heart. Because he is all-knowing, his sense of justice never lacks necessary information. You get that? Because God is all-knowing, God, he, his sense of justice never lacks necessary information. God knows everything. You know, we come to him and we, we think sometimes we're telling him something he doesn't know and God's going, oh, I put money to just sit there. Did you hear that? God is never taken back by what we say, what we do. He's always saying, Jesus, pay the price. Yes. Come here. Let me love on you. Isn't it be good to be loved by a good God? God is full of goodness. Love, benevolence, mercy, grace is all included in His goodness. The goodness of God is that He that which enables him to be kind and benevolent and full of good towards all men. God said he sent Jesus. What did the angel say again? Glory to God in the highest. Peace and goodwill to all men, right? 
Well, except for my neighbor. <laughs> oh, man. Raise your hand if that includes all. <laughs> it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. And what does repentance mean? It comes from the Greek word metaneo, which means to change your mind. <clears throat> what do we have to change our mind from? The way we see ourselves to the way God sees us. Yeah. When we accept Jesus as our Savior, we accept the fact that He died, paid the, paid the price. Yes. We got to see ourselves as holy. We got to see ourselves as righteous. We got to see ourselves as blameless. We have to see ourselves as perfect in His sight. Yes. Because when he looks at you, he doesn't see you. He sees what Jesus did. Amen. Y'all remember in, in the old old times when the sacrifices were made, how many of you have ever seen a picture of the Ark of the Covenant? You know, it had it, it had it was a big box, it had two angels on the top of it with their wings like this. The wings where they touched, that was called the mercy seat. In the New Testament, it's called propitiation. Jesus is our propitiation. He was the mercy seat, but it was His blood that was poured on the mercy seat. So when God looked at Israel in the old times, when the, when the priest made the pouring of the blood on the mercy seat, when God looked down at the law, He saw the blood. Yes. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Yes. yes. When you've accepted Christ, everything that was done in the Old Testament was done once a year, ritualistically. We only do it once and for all. Yes. Is that good? Yes. Jesus came. All of that was a picture of what Christ was coming to do. Yes. He came and did it once and for all. He died once and for all. He made the He made the sacrifice, the payment, once and for all. Yes. What does all mean? Everything. Isn't God good? Repent, change our mind. God's goodness is seen most clearly in his forbearance. His willingness to express extreme levels of patience. I have learned over the years to be more patient. We have any impatient people in here? <laughs> McDonald's has made some people that way. <laughs> Romans 2 4 says, Or do you despise the riches of his goodness? God, his goodness is rich towards you. His willingness to express extreme levels of patience brings us to that verse, Romans 2, 4. Or do you despise the riches of His goodness, forbearance and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? The goodness of God leads you to change your mind. Yes. Yes. Ephesians 2, 4 through 7 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, I gave you a Hebrew word a couple of Messages back, said, which means grace and mercy. God doing for us what we can't do for ourselves, and God not allowing us to have the punishment or the bad things that we deserve. He took them for us. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, how much did he love us? So, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together in Christ, by grace you were saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. How many of you have been to heaven? The Bible says you have. According to this scripture, in verse 6 of chapter 2 of the book of Ephesians, listen carefully. Raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace uh, in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Is that good or what? Amen. Amen. One person thought it was good. <laughs> Two. Jonathan said oh. amen. <laughs> Jonathan was the person I heard. I said it first. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us to God is faithful. How many of you have ever found God not to be faithful? Has He ever made a promise to you that He hasn't kept? Nope. God's made promises to you you haven't received. That's right. Amen? That's right. Yes. Bible's full of them. We need to start praying the promises 
over the problems. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Y'all remember Johnny Rowlett? Y'all know Johnny? Yep. Johnny's a good friend of mine. He was here a few weeks ago. That's his big thing. Pray the problems and the promises go away. No. Everybody's looking. They're funny. <laughs> I did that purposely. <laughs> we pray the promises over the problems. You got a problem? Start looking at the promises. Yes. God is faithful, absolutely trustworthy. His word will never fail. Amen. 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 God is faithful. In the core of his being. If he says he's never going to leave you. I can promise you he's never going to leave you. He may be standing behind you. But all you need to do is turn around. Let the nail change your mind. Since he is immutable. Unchangeable. His faithfulness can never change. <laughs> Hebrews 13.5 says. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Should have been big, big amen right there. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 6.18 says that in two immutable things, it which is impossible for God to lie, God cannot lie. You ask God a question, he's going to answer you. You may not like the answer Right. But he won't, he's not going to lie. We might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. God is merciful. God made his appointment in the Garden of Eden because of his mercy. Isn't that good? You know, if it had been us and we messed up, we'd, think, we'd probably have been hiding too. Ah, you know, God's coming. You, you, you better hide. Adam, where are you? I'm over here. Ain't got no reason to hide. Price has been paid. God knows. And he sees you as perfect and holy. John 8, 10 through 11 says, When Jesus had raised himself up, he saw no one but the woman and said to her, Woman, where are your accusers? Has no one co condemned you? And she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, I'm going to take you out and I'm going to stone you. Because that's what the law says to do. He says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. How did, what did he give her in order to give her the power to not sin anymore? He gave her the gift of no condemnation. Yes. When you realize that you're not, you do not stand in front of God condemned, it gives you the power to, as Paul says, to reign over sin. Yes. So the, the, the issues that you have are not who you are. It's somebody trying to take over your computer system. You know about computers. Communication stuff. Somebody takes that stuff over, starts talking on it and making it do stuff it ain't supposed to do. That's what's going on with you because of the sin nature that we've been born into. But God is full of grace. I said, well, no, God, the definition of grace is God doing for us what we can't do for ourselves. We can't do this. I mean, we can die, but we're going to go to hell. We can pay our own price, but there's nothing to redeem us. On the other side of all that, Jesus died and redeemed us. John 1.16 said, And for the fullness that we have received, the grace for grace. God gives you grace, but then He gives you more. He gives you stuff that you don't deserve and then gives you more. How many of you have ever been to a buffet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what grace is. <laughs> what, do you, what do you lack? Here it is. Anybody in here needs some peace in your life? There's a whole help in here. Free for the taking. How I many of you need love in your life? But you just don't understand. I'm just a, I'm just an old unlovable guy. I'm an old unlovable person. I just don't see how anybody can love me. I look in the mirror and I don't even love myself. I'm going to tell you right now, your creator says I love you. Wow. 
your creator. I formed you in your mother's womb. I know the plans that I have for you. I've set your life in motion. I wrote your story. Here. Trust me. So I want to bring all this up to uh, some practical applications and share with you. As you can see, the true revelation of God and his transcendent and personal attributes will liberate the human soul. God is not this old angry guy sitting up here just waiting for us to mess up. Well, I knew he was going to mess up. Bonk. That's not God. If that's the case, then why did Jesus come? Why did Jesus pay the price? Why does the Bible tell us that he paid the price once and for all if God's going to bonk us on the head every time we mess up? I grew up thinking that. I was scared to death of God. But God doesn't want you to be scared of him. The Bible talks about the fear of the Lord, but the fear of the Lord, Jesus gave us the definition of the word fear. He says, what did the devil say to Jesus? Turn your stone into bread because you're hungry. Thou shalt. What? What do you say? Thou shalt not eat bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then carried him up on the temple and said, Throw yourself down, the angels won't. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. Fear. Is nothing more than worshiping God and being in awe of who He is. <clears throat> I'm going to stand in front of Him one day, whether you've accepted Him or not. I want to be on the accepting side. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Amen. 2 Peter 1 2 through 3 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. As His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. You've heard me say this over and over. We have been given everything. You have, you have faith. It may be that still small grain of mustard seed, but the more you experience God, the more your faith will grow and blossom. You have peace. Well, you just don't understand. I, I just I, I'm so unsettled in my life. I'm, I got all this going on. There's a lot of chaos, but tap into that peace that you've been given and let it expand. We've been given everything that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue by which you have been given. He has been given us exceedingly and great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That is such a powerful passage. Write this down. It's probably in your notes. 2 Peter 1, 2 through 4. Go home and read that and, and, and let that sink in. Let it take root in your heart. Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. And this is where I'm going to close, Brent, right here. With this passage. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. Who? Jesus. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of His calling. God's got a calling on each one of our lives. He wants you to be a builder in the kingdom of God. What are the riches of His glory, of His inheritance in the saints? Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe according to the mighty working of His power? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we stand in awe of You tonight. Yes, Lord. Thank you. All these attributes point us to how good You really are. Yes, Lord. Thank your you. love, Your patient, Your kind, Your good, yes, Lord. Your loving, yes. You are love, yes. You are full of mercy and full of grace. It's all because of Jesus. And we celebrate this time of year in the birth of our Savior. Thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, for loving us. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And thank you for the promises of your word. We thank you, Father, for the word imputation. Because the life of Jesus was imputed upon our lives as you took ours. Thank you, Father. 
We love you. We need you. We stand in need of your touch. And Father, those that are watching my, on Facebook, I pray a special blessing on each person. I pray that whatever need that they have would be met. If it's sickness, if it's financial, whatever it may be, Father, I pray you meet and go above and beyond that need. Yes, Lord. Each person in this room, I pray a special blessing on each person. You know each situation, each life. And I pray, Father, if there's healing that needs to take place, I pray that right now your hand touches them. If there's broken hearts in this room, Father, I, I, I say they let their heart break because it's expanding their ability to be able to love. Yes. Yes. And you'll put the pieces back together perfectly. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this time of year we get to celebrate. That's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. You guys receive Christ that word tonight. Amazing grace. My chains are gone.